Hello, everybody, and welcome to our featured presentation on unified platforms, realizing the benefits of integration in trial planning and execution. I'm Brian Dempster. I'm the Senior Director of Global Clinical Management here at Axiom Real Time Metrics, and today I'm joined by my colleague, Sophia. Hi, everyone. I'm Sophia. I'm part of the Randomization and Trial Supply Management here at Axiom Real Time Metrics, and I'm looking forward to talking to everyone today. Great. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about clinical trials, um, where clinical trials have come from, where they're going, and specifically the integration of unified platforms within those trials. And specifically also we're going to be talking about our solutions for that, which are based on the Fusion E clinical suite here at Axiom Real-Time Metrics. Uh, the suite consists of a number of modules which can be tailored to the individual trial and we'll talk about that in detail and how that's done. So we should start at the beginning and we should talk about approaches to trial execution. So those of you who have been in the industry a number of years like myself will remember uh, back in the day that trial execution centered around a traditional phased approach model with very distinct barriers between the different sections of a clinical trial timeline. This was really um, created because of the technology that existed in the day. CRFs used to be on paper. The advent of uh, non-carbon required paper for CRFs was a really big step forward. It seems ridiculous to think of that now, but back in the 80s and 90s, that really was a technical advancement. And it meant that we could shorten the life cycle of how data was entered into the database from the original source uh, quite considerably. And since then, of course, we've moved on and we'll talk a little bit about future advances as we go forward. But it's really important to go back to that point to think about how trial design uh, centered around those kind of technologies back in the 1980s and 90s and how we have continued with that model of trial design to this day. So we very much segment the different sections of the trial as we move forward. The technology that exists now though really allows for those barriers to be broken down between the different sections of the clinical trial timeline. It means that for example data entered at source can be uploaded into the ECRF instantaneously in some approaches and it can be monitored remotely uh, before SDV even occurs and, and should be in fact so that we can establish that the quality of the data is continuous all the way through the study rather than looking at the data in sections as it comes in and that's a really important uh, consideration as we go forward in Kyle Designs. Instead of thinking about how we should design the trial and then fit the technology that we have here at Axiom we're really a believer of looking at the technology that we have and then using that to design the best possible trial that we can. Great, thanks Brian. So what we're really gonna to talk to you guys about or highlight today is the, is the three key solutions. So the key solutions that help with that, utilize that trial execution. So we're gonna jump right into it and talk about the three key solutions. So that's the randomization court management, the ETMF, and the trial supply management. And we'll, we'll uh, Brian and I will cover on that um, later, later on in the presentation. So starting off with our next slide, which is the randomization and cohort management. So it's really, we're, we're, we're gonna be talking about that phased approach and then moving into that continuous approach. So when it comes to randomization and cohort management, it's really about that study startup, that study end, that initial, initial setup, that integration, if that's required. Um, and then we have those manual trackers around the wait list and the cohort activity. So it's all about those, and then it comes down to that that um, the end of study documentation, that reconciliation, and that unblinding that goes along with it. But when we're moving into a continuous approach, and that's when we're we're really bringing on the smart digital trackers for cohort and status and wait lists, and we'll we'll touch on that on the next slide. But we'll also have that digital medical monitor, and of course the actionable real time notifications. And again, we'll we'll touch on notifications a little uh, later on in the presentation. So for our next slide, this really 
this really streamlines and and ties into <clears throat> and really streamlines and ties into the into the automating our process around the cohort workflow. So when you're using that technology, um, that brings everything together, that workflow around cohort management. So that includes that initial initial step of that sponsor, the zero, uh, adding that or activating that cohort. From there, once that cohort is activated, you'll, you're adding that slot and then that potential subject to be screened. And then that once that slot's added, then that subject will go ahead and do their minimum data entry, upload that enrollment package. So indicating that the subject has been screened. So once that once that enrollment package has been uploaded, that goes through review of the sponsor, the CRO, the medical monitor. And then that final review and that approval is done by that medical monitor where they would approve that subject for enrollment. From there, we have we have that subject that's um, enrolled, and then that IP is assigned to the patient. So the main takeaway is that is that we're really streamlining and automating that process. So once that IP is assigned, that will obviously impact the IP requirements. So if there are any resupply of inventory that needs to be sent to the sites, then all that can be activated automatically and really help streamline that process and that manual work that would go into it. And back to Brian. Thanks a lot, Sophia. So the thought we want to take a moment to think about these differences between the phase and the continuous uh, trial design approaches. So again, just to recap on some of the things we've already talked about, phase approach really started from the technology that was available some 20 years ago. The continuous approach really um, takes it on board the technology that exists today and uses that technology to drive the trial. That means that we get much better data quality, we get much uh, clearer pictures of the data integrity. And one of the examples I wanna to give to that, we've already talked a little bit about the monitoring aspect and the continuous uh, approach to monitoring and the, the contemporary approach to monitoring. But another example, which I think is often overlooked, but is super important, is the documentation flow within a clinical study and how that's changed in that time. And with the advent of ETMF, that's really, we've seen a massive improvement in the quality of the trial documentation flow. So if we think about what that looks like, the typical TMF model uh, is represented here in this graph. We really used to see the case where lots of documents would come in at the beginning of the trial, uh, not unexpectedly, uh, they would be uploaded into the TMF at study start, and then once the trial began, it came into the maintenance phase, then documents would be collected on an ongoing basis, but there was no real oversight to documentation upload into the TMF. We hear horror stories of people having documents in bankers' boxes under their desk uh, for the duration of the study because they're collected or even not collected from sites at all, but left there and then wait until the end of the study, at which point there is often a mad scramble to collect all of the documents and get them in ready for inspection. Now, how do we know that this is a true representation? Well, almost all inspections have a component of a finding where TMF health is brought up. Uh, the, any scroll through a Google search or uh, any conversation with an inspector that will tell you that TMF health is a big problem in inspections. And why is that a problem? Well, because as we all know, if it isn't documented, it didn't happen. It's the great adage that goes through, but also it just means that there's no contemporary evidence that documentation reflects the life cycle of the study and reflects the health of the study throughout the duration of the study and that is a big issue for inspectors they want to know that your documentation accurately accurately reflects what was actually happening at the time and it's not a story that was collected at the end and put together in some kind of storyboard approach so again looking at this graph this is the traditional model for tmf but not the ideal model if we look at what that means in terms of an etmf system you can capture data on the TMF throughout the study in real time. That means a project manager can look at any individual contributor and see what the health of their TMF uploads are. 
that this leads to a more contemporary uploading of documentation. That means it leads to a more contemporary view of the trial. And then at the end of the inspection uh, time, you can look at this and be absolutely confident that you can show an inspector that you knew what was happening throughout the trial. You need a couple of things in order to do this, not just people who are trained and knowledgeable on the TMF and, and are bought into the idea of uploading this in real time. You also need a system that allows it. So um, remote upload of documentation is really important. So documentation is collected at the site and that sends immediately into the ETMF uh, through the cloud. That uh, means contemporary in, in, in a very real sense. Uh, it also requires, as we talked about the project manager's role in this, is to ensure that that's happening and that the quality of the documentation is of a sufficient standard. That will only be done by a system that allows you to look into the TMF at any given point within its life cycle and look at the quality of the uploads of those documents, the quality of the capture of those documents, and making sure that you can report back in real time any changes that are required. That you also need to draw in milestones around those things. Uh, things like expiry dates are very important. Uh, you can actually, rather than trying to track those outside of the TMF, you can track it in the TMF system itself so that you know when a document is about to expire and actually provide a notification to the contributor who's responsible for, for putting that document in the TMF. So a system that has a holistic approach to the TMF like this really makes a, a massive difference. And as we saw from the graphs I showed earlier, it really is changing uh, not only the way that we conduct the trials, but that's leading to the quality. So that's a, a real example of the technology driving an improved quality within the system through an improved trial design. Great, thanks, Brian. So that ties into our last key technology, or our last key solution, which is our trial supply management. And trial supply management, of course, is a very broad uh, topic, but we're really just going to focus on the site side. So in our phase, phased approach, we have it's mostly mostly focused on the interim monitoring visit, that schedule, um, where the monitors are going in, they're looking at the data, and making sure that that um, everything is accurate around their IMB schedule and that again that uh, means that that they're taking that segmented approach and, and reviewing only and verifying the the shipments or the inventory at a, a segmented or key time points um, and again that ties into that reconciliation at the end of that study but when it comes to our continuous approach and when we're looking at our when we're using our technology uh, this is where the real-time awareness the real-time notifications are are triggered so when there's um, initial shipments where there's inventory that needs to be quarantined you're really getting those real-time awareness um, so this allows for the monitors to know if there's any discrepancies or if there's a temperature excursion so the monitors are, are notified right away and that's what our our, our our system our technology is really about by just being notified right away um, so then when that when the monitors go on site they really it's really about cleaning up and closing out anything beforehand um, rather than just trying to review everything when they have that monitor visit. So, so the main takeaway from this is that we're really trying to make sure that, that any issues are resolved before they have that scheduled visit on that site. So again, this ties into our global inventory awareness. This ties into our CTM tracking. So for for our global inventory awareness and tracking of your inventory, the key aspect is CTM tracking. So the clinical trial materials tracking side involves everything from global wide inventory to investigational ancillary supplies right down to site inventory and accountability, and that's where the dispensing activities and um, are occurring at site and subject level. So one of the one of the key messages that that uh, about having that unified platform <clears throat> is about um, being able to visualize that information. And, and one way to to help with that visualization is having all of your information in one place. And one of those examples is IP compliance management. So being able to have those quick visuals. Um, allows you to monitor, allows you to identify and to compare against those metrics and, and act accordingly. 
And we're back to Brian. Oh, actually, no, sorry, we're not back to Brian. That's still me. Um, <laughs> uh, so for our next slide, we're, we're uh, just going to be talking on talking about the notification. So I know we really touched on this briefly, but the main takeaway from the three key solutions what around, about, of that technology was really about the notifications, so having these notifications in real time, whether it's for upcoming patient visits, for expiration dates, um, subject to role, subject to, um, discontinued. So the any notifications that are, are key and essential. And the main takeaway is that um, any data point should be able to trigger that notification. Um, and you should be able to have that flexibility um, with your technology and make it creatable so that you can be notified in your preferred format. So whether it's via text, via phone, via um, email, um, you have those notifications that are customizable and can be um, sent to the applicable parties as required. Um, another one that we, we touched on already was being able to visualize or so being able to log in, um, having those key metrics flagged to you. Um, so logging in, um, noting, noting what are the key targets, what are what's the status of enrollment? What are those um, those those details right down to the to the bone? And and all those are those details are are readily available for you. Um, and so the last piece is to be able to view your details. And of course, what better way to view those details is with just a couple of clicks. Um, so just being able to access all of your data through reporting and having that flexibility to configure and customize um, based on your protocol needs is, is, is truly what a unified platform should be doing for you. Great. Thanks, Sophia. So we've come right back to uh, really the, the summary of this. And as Sophia said, the unified platform, the real advantage of a unified platform is having that information to hand in real time and having confidence in the information that's coming in. So right as we talked about from the TMF, as soon as the information is available, it's actually at your fingertips. And our uh, solution to doing that is the Fusion system. Uh, that gives us centralized data, it gives us the secure notifications that you talk about and the real-time notifications that Sophia talked about. And that allowed the use of Fusion really allows us to think about the design of the trial and how we can actually utilize that technology to make for a better design trial and therefore ultimately better uh, data quality and integrity. So Fusion is made up of a number of different modules, but the important aspect of this, and this goes back to the couple of clicks comments, is they all have a single login, and they're completely configurable. You don't have to have uh, the whole system. You can uh, choose the system that you want and adapt and pick the modules that you need uh, for your trial. And again, you can utilize that in the trial design. You can pick the modules you need to, pick to design the best trial for your product. Selected modules uh, is where we start. Then option two is EDC plus the selected modules. So the selected modules here are trial design. And then ultimately you can go for a, any part of or up to the complete fusion suite, which will allow you to run your entire trial. We also have uh, uh, unique information on all of the different designs, uh, sorry, all of the different modules available and all of the different designs that we can uh, utilize those modules for. You choose your services to suit your needs. And again, the real advantage of this is the single sign-on, the centralized dashboard, so you get your information in real time, and that allows you to respond in real time as well. Again, Having that data to hand, having the notifications so that you get the data in real time and you can decide what not what data you, you want to have notif be notified of in real time so that you can react is a critical importance. It helps you to design a better trial and it helps you to execute a better trial as well. We really believe that Fusion is the best system to not only execute your trial but also to bring in at the beginning so you can help to design the best trial for that execution. It just remains for me to say thank you for 
joining us today and for sharing in the presentation and we look forward to receiving your questions uh, later on thanks so much thank you thanks very much for listening to our presentation and we have a couple of poll questions that um, we have in the poll section so if you'd like to go ahead there and just um, record your answers we'll give you a moment to do that and then we'll also look to see if there are any questions in the Q&A box as well. Okay. So, Sophie, it looks so we've got a couple of answers in the poll sections there. Do you want to just run through the questions for everyone and we can... Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Um, so the first question, what percentage of your studies use a unified platform? So that was our, our first question, our, our poll question here. Um, and then our second question, do you conduct a review of your of previous study conduct execution before planning your next study? Yeah. So not surprisingly, it looks uh, about 50% of people use a unified platform in their studies, which, uh, which is really gratifying to see. Actually, it's uh, definitely shows that these things are being more widely used in the industry now, which is great. Um, and the interestingly, do you conduct a review of your previous study conduct and execution before planning your next study? That's 100% people said yes. And again, I'm not surprised by that answer. Actually, one of the things that we discussed when we were posing those bold questions is what's actually done with that information. It's very uh, common for people to have a kind of a, a, a review and debrief after the study is wound up um, to see what lessons could be learned but um, would be really interested to to know how those lessons are then reapplied. We've often seen the case where um, a full debrief is done but then when uh, the next study is opened up we go exactly back to the same SOPs and there's no real mechanism for working in lessons learned into SOPs and best practices for future studies. So um, not surprising to see so many people do that post-mortem, but uh, it's a really good idea to think about what you're doing with that information uh, once you have it. Um, and I think we have some questions, Cor. Yeah. Um, great. So our first question is, can the principles of using technology to design better study execution be applied after study starts? So that's a great question. And, and I'm, I'm going to take that one. Um, so I'm going to take this, take this question on. Um, and so just one thing to note um, or to highlight um, is that just halfway through the study, it's it's really essential to, to take that pause, um, take that moment um, and make that list or, or wish list, if you want to call it, and really take the take that time to think about um, if there is another module or feature that can better help support your study. Um, and when one way to do that, of course, is to, to reach out to your vendors, reach out to your partners, as of course they're able to assist you with some of the options that are available um, and help support your additional study needs. And that's something that, that can be seen as, as a positive thing or, or taking that positive approach um, because it's, it's, it's really allowing you to review your study metrics, take those lessons learned and apply them in real time. And it's something that we've seen that, that has come up throughout the study and, and where we will um, revisit some of recommendations that were noted early on in the study startup. So we're, we're having those initial discussions and um, and, and the sponsor notice will uh, just notice that we don't want to revisit this right now. Well, let's revisit it later. So it's it's it maybe wasn't a priority at that time, but again, just revisiting those recommendations, having those discussions um, around uh, what's the most benefit now, but also what's the benefit later on or for future studies as well. Um, and we're really looking at those options, having those discussions 
And of, and of course, this applies to when we're talking about mid-study rescues, mm -hmm. um, whether we're activating inventory management or the or the CTM tracking module. So that again, that's we're we're taking on that taking on that study. Um, another example is taking on that study um, where they had an IRT, for example, um, and but maybe it didn't meet um, all of their needs, um, or the IRT can't support their protocol amendment requirements. Um, so again, it, it's it, we've seen that and it's happened quite often. So again, just 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 remembering that it's always it's always good to go back and have those discussions and revisit those additional options that are available. And and at the end of the day, that's what a, a truly unified platform should be doing: turning off and on um, what's applicable and revisiting those additional features. Exactly. Um. So the next question I can take, it's uh, how is the need for SDV coordinated with the continuous remote monitoring approach? So that's a fantastic question. Um, so the answer really in one word on this is about focus. So I think if we go back to what was talked about in the presentation and the traditional approach to study design and monitoring within that study design, uh, being the uh, monitor, you know, data would be collected and then the monitor would travel to the site and the monitoring would be done on site along with the source document verification at that point. And then once all of that was done, queries would be raised, the next visit, those queries would be posed and answered and so on and so forth. It was very, very segmented. With the continuous approach, the monitoring can be done in the system from the monitor's home or on an airplane or, or a train or wherever. The, the, the point being that monitoring of the data quality can be done at any time as soon as the data is entered. Um, source document verification obviously requires that source at the, the clinical site. And so it allows, it means that the monitor can actually get a lot of the administrative tasks that used to be conducted during a monitoring visit on site done before they even arrive at site. They can actually be going through raising questions on the data that, could, that are posed solely by the data and not by the review of data and source to the, to the site. So that those kind of things can be addressed even before the monitor gets on site, which means that they can maximize their time for source document verification and other activities that can't be done remotely, such as um, certain aspects of IP reconciliation and that kind of thing. So. The, the need for coordinating continuous remote monitoring, how is that married to SDV? It's really about actually allowing the SDV to be focused upon when uh, it, you're on site and not having to take up the time with things that can be done prior to arriving. Okay. Great. Oh, sorry, Brent. I think we have a, I believe we have another question. Um, and that is, what other areas can you apply the technology focused approach? Oh, that's another great question. And I think uh, there's, you know, <clears throat> if there's a broad answer to that, I would say, which is pretty much any aspect of your trial. And that's really goes to the heart of what we talked about today really have to think about the technology and how you apply the available technology to the, the, to the trial, um, but also how that technology can drive the trial design. So there are things like, and going back to the monitoring, one example that immediately springs to my mind is uh, monitoring scheduling. Uh, you can actually have, um, keep a, a very careful eye on the data entry, which means that rather than having the regular schedule visits as that used to be um, planned, so six to four weeks, you can actually keep a, a, a real-time eye on the data entry that's going into the site. The quality of that data going into the site drive your uh, monitoring frequency to be longer or, or shorter depending on the circumstances. So there are things like that. There's also IP um, resupply can be driven by the Unified Platform as well. It's, it's really about having access to that information in real time, which allows you to make decisions across the whole breadth of your study um, as to where you need to spend your resources most efficiently. 
Great, thank you. Um, and I believe that brings us to the end of our, our questions. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for, for listening to our presentation and have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.